Greetings citizens of the world, this is a message from Anonymous, for the World Health Organization. It is widely believed that you are a group that truly seeks to maintain the best public health around the world, but in the past few months, it has become apparent that you are more of a political organization than a public service. In fact, your allegiance to the governments that support you through massive financial donations has put the world in grave danger. The organization that you belong to has a very important responsibility, because it is trusted by most of the world for credible information. You are seen as the utmost authority on health information, and act as the arbiter of truth for up-to-date science on emerging diseases. Most media broadcasters, politicians, and health officials around the world have looked to your press releases and news conferences for the most up-to-date scientific information on the growing COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic, and you failed miserably in your duty to protect the people. Your response to this virus has been a day late and a dollar short, every step of the way, beginning with your refusal to admit in the early stages of the outbreak that human-to-human -human transmission was taking place, when this fact was obvious to scientists and journalists around the world who were following the story and keeping up with the studies as they were being published. At the time, the Chinese government was doing its best to downplay the severity of the outbreak, and the World Health Organization acted as their mouthpiece, reporting whatever Chinese authorities told them to. As a result of this guidance, the entire world did not take the threat seriously, because everyone assumed that the World Health Organization could be trusted. Members of the World Health Organization also took months before finally declaring the coronavirus a global pandemic. During press conferences in recent months, representatives of the organization insisted that they wanted to avoid declaring a pandemic prematurely because they didn't want to scare anyone or create a panic. However, scientific findings have since shown that we were already dealing with a global pandemic by the time that Chinese authorities decided to quarantine Wuhan, because the genetics of the virus has been traced back to at least October or November 2019. What we see are epidemics in different parts of the world, affecting countries in different ways and requiring a tailored response. The sudden increase in new cases is certainly very concerning. I have spoken consistently about the need for facts, not fear. Using the word pandemic now does not fit the facts, but it may certainly cause fear. For the past several months you have insisted that this virus was not airborne, despite significant evidence, including multiple scientific studies suggesting that this was the case. Now that the whole world is in lockdown, you have finally admitted that this virus can be transmitted through the air, despite the fact that numerous scientific studies since January have confirmed this to be the case. The general population has been getting a very confusing message, and very bad advice, thanks to these conflicting reports, and the murky definition for airborne, that is being used by health officials. Since this virus is spread through the air, and can remain in the air for up to three hours, the use of N95 masks is very important in stopping the spread of the illness. Unfortunately, the United States and other undeveloped countries were caught off guard by the pandemic and are not prepared with enough proper protective equipment for medical health professionals, meaning that there certainly won't be enough to go around for the general population. The World Health Organization is ignoring the science and the common sense, but masks have been proven to drastically reduce the spread of illnesses like the one we are facing. There are many people in the United States who are learning this fact and are becoming upset about the lies that they have been told, and many of them are suggesting that the World Health Organization is helping the US government prevent panic by downplaying the importance of masks and transmission through the air. Let's not forget that the organization's largest donors are the United States government, the Chinese government, and the Gates Foundation. This is perhaps why WH.O officials have refused to recognize Taiwan as a separate entity from China, and why the organization has praised the leadership of both the US and China, despite the fact that both governments have been criticized for their lack of transparency and the heavy-handed tactics that have been used to enforce quarantines. Let's face it, the World Health Organization is corrupt, and is more of a public relations firm for its donors than it is a bastion of public health. The organization does not have a good track record with outbreaks either, and rarely does anything of value to actually help. In 2015, the World Health Organization admitted that they did a bad job at handling the Ebola epidemic in West Africa. In the Ebola outbreak, the organization actually made many of the same mistakes, including waiting too long before declaring a global health emergency, a decision which scientists later said, undoubtedly contributed to the unprecedented scale of the outbreak. After the failed response to the Ebola epidemic, 
the previous director general was replaced with Tidros Adonim Ghebreyesus who is now the face of the organization. Tidros also has a history of corruption, which includes downplaying the severity of a cholera outbreak in Ethiopia when he was the country's health minister between 2005 and 2012. In addition to misleading the world about the severity of the virus, you have also encouraged the draconian measures that governments have taken to enforce quarantines. As the Chinese government was silencing doctors and locking them in quarantine for speaking out, Tidros and others praised its response, and urged other governments around the world to take similar measures. Citizens of other countries, especially those in the Western world, thought that it could never happen in their neighborhood, but most governments seem to be taking the advice of the World Health Organization and have started to implement military-style lockdowns similar to those seen in Wuhan during the early days of the outbreak. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.